The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Hello YouTube. Merry Christmas to everyone. This is my Christmas present to the whole United States of America. This information that is put forth to you right now is the best information that you can have to fight for your right to be an American and be free. This gift that I'm giving you now is a gift to you to give to your friends as well. This is a gift that you just keep on giving. The only way that you can get this information completely out is by giving it over and over and over again. This is for our freedom people. For your children's freedom. Everyone's freedom. Or, in this picture right here, which is quite disgusting, could be your last day. So look, pay attention to everything that's being said in the next few clips, because it's very important. Very, very important. Much love to y'all. Merry Christmas. And I hope we all have a very, very happy new year. Good night and God bless to all. The First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The Third Amendment, no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. The Fourth Amendment, totally eroded under the modern day system of tyranny, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized tsa have you ever read that fifth amendment no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia when an actual service in time of war or public danger nor shall any person be subjected for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor to be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Sixth Amendment, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Seventh Amendment, in suit to common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall otherwise be re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Eighth Amendment, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Ninth Amendment, the enumeration of the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. The people retain the other rights. Tenth Amendment, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor pro prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So in other words, there's a balance of power, and part of that power remains with the individual and the state. How many of these Bill of Rights have they utterly shredded and eroded and defecated upon under all these 
pretenses of law they have, including chief among them the indefinite detention bill passed today by the Senate in reconciled form, expected to be passed by President Obama. Uh, perhaps later today or tomorrow. Remember this day, it is a day to live in infamy. December 15, 2011, exactly 220 years after the Bill of Rights was ratified in 1791. Executive orders. This is how they introduce you. See, they're introducing it all. They've denied they're building all this for all these decades. Now as they unveil it, they're putting their PR spin on it. So Executive Order 10,990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. That's been reaffirmed under PDD 51, under the John Warner Defense Authorization Act and others. Executive Order 10,995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Executive Order 10,997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels and minerals. Executive Order 10,998 allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, and vehicles of any kind, and total control over all highways, seaports, and waterways. Executive Order 10999 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Executive Order 11000 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, welfare functions. What's happening through the imploded economy that the foreign central banks are engineering? So they make you be beholden to the government. Designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. That goes on through the Selective Service. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports, aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Remember when they shut down all flights after 9-11? Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Remember Louisiana, Mississippi, Katrina? Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. The FEMA director is working 24 hours. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over all railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crises. Executive Order 11310 grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plans set out in executive orders to institute industrial support to establish judicial and legislative liaison to control all aliens to operate penal and correctional institutions and to advise and assist the president. So that's your FEMA camps. Executive Order 11049 assigns emergency preparedness functions to federal departments and agencies, consolidating 21 operational executive orders issued at 15-year period. Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wage salaries, credit and the flow of money in U.S. financial institution, and any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the President, Congress cannot review the action for six months. PDD-51 says never. In history, there are events which stand as milestones, marking points of no return. Usually, however, such moments are only visible in hindsight. The Enabling Act passed by Hitler in 1933, followed by the Reichstag Fire Decree, were passed in Germany with little resistance and without public outcry. And even though those laws nullified the German Constitution and handed the power of life and death over all German citizens to one man, no one noticed that the line had been crossed. No one expected the chain of events which were destined to unfold. No one understood that Germany had already passed the point of no return. On December 15, 2011, on the 220-year anniversary of the ratification of the Bill of Rights, the U.S. Senate passed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. The bill officially gives the military the right to arrest anyone, U.S. citizen or otherwise, and to hold them indefinitely without trial. And since the government will not be required to produce one shred of evidence to support its claims, a mere accusation of belligerent activities is now all that is needed to declare you an enemy combatant and to make you disappear forever. You might hope that such powers will never be used, but history consistently proves otherwise. Throughout history, it has been the norm for political dissidents to be imprisoned and executed without due process. Throughout history, it has been the norm for political opponents to be taken from their homes in the middle of the night on charges of treason. 
When a government assigns itself the power to imprison and kill without trial, its motives are always the same. The United States is not an exception. If there was any lingering shadow of doubt in your mind that we had passed the point of no return, it should be gone now. If it isn't, then you aren't paying attention. We are in the 11th hour. We are witnessing the final stages of the police state falling into place. The stage is set, and we have very little time to influence the events that are headed our way. Right now, we must form a coalition across the left and the right. We must set aside our petty differences, no matter how important we think those differences are. We must unify against our common enemy. Our government has become a mere figurehead to the real powers that be. The Congress, the Senate, the executive branch do not represent our interest. They are bought and paid for. They are corrupt beyond all repair, and they deserve nothing less than to be arrested and tried for high treason. We the people have the power to take them down. It's in our hands right now. The government's power is derived solely from our obedience. Its wealth is derived solely from our labor. Its strength is actually our strength. Take it back from them. If in one unified strike we withdraw our money from the banks which have gorged on taxpayer dollars and cut off all payments, credit cards, loans, and taxes, if we refuse them our obedience and our labor and stand in defiance with clear intent, we will bring the machine to its knees. But we can only achieve this if we look past the artificial dividing line of left and right and act in unison as one people, as one nation, indivisible and focused on our goal. We must mobilize as if our lives and our children's lives depended on it, because they do. This is the 11th hour. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. A lawyer. You're an enemy combatant. I want my lawyer. You tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. You're an enemy combatant.